Hello guys. Um, you might be wondering why I've got such a huge mess on my desk right now and why on earth I would be filming a video of it. Um, story time. A lot of you have asked me before to be a little bit more open about the struggles with my mental illness and kind of what I go through and what it's like to be someone, maybe an army wife who lives with mental illness. Well, <laughs> today is a really great day for me to just kind of let it loose and um, be super honest and be super vulnerable and tell you exactly what it's like. I'm gonna tidy my desk up while, and then I'm gonna do something like maybe some pen work or something in, or maybe some ink work or something on my current journal while I tell you of my woes. So you already know, well, if you're new to my channel, maybe you don't know this yet, but if you aren't new to my channel, then you probably already do know. I'm gonna make a huge mess out of this. I, ah. I have bipolar one disorder as well as obsessive compulsive disorder, ADHD, and post-traumatic stress disorder due to a childhood full of sexual abuse. Um, you don't need to feel sorry for me or anything because I don't feel sorry for myself. There are a lot of people out there, a lot of kids out there who have it uh, a lot worse than I do, or I did, so, um, yeah, don't feel sorry for me. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is um, one of my main struggles that I have um, as far as being a bipolar woman who is married to, what am I looking for? Who's married to a man in the military. Um, most people are really excited when most people in the military actually are really excited when they finally get orders to go somewhere overseas. Um, I know that we were. Um, about, let's see, oh, I want to say about two months or so ago, we got um, told that we were getting orders to go to South Korea as a family. And oh my goodness gracious. I can't even describe to you the amount of excitement that was happening in my family. My husband's Filipino, and my kids are Filipino-American. We, um, this would have been an amazing opportunity for us, and um, maybe you under you, you heard me say would have been. Um, <laughs> when we uh, were doing all of our paperwork, or rather, when I was doing our paperwork. Part of the things in the military is that you have to, um, sorry about that, I had to go grab some cold coffee for this and some more Q-tips. So I can just literally look like I'm doing something here while I'm talking to you. Um, <laughs> you have to fill out something called EFMP paperwork. And basically EFMP paperwork is something that you fill out if one of your family members is a quote unquote exceptional family member and they need certain services provided by the military for them. <clears throat> now, if you, if you have, uh, um, if you have a sponsor or I'm sorry, if you have a dependent, whoops, who has a condition that dang it if you have a dependent that has a condition that requires um, special quote-unquote services if you don't um, report your EFMP status then they can hold the military service member um, they can you know he can get in trouble so when we found out that we were going to be PCSing to South Korea we were all ridiculously excited um, I started joining all the South Korea military wife groups and um, 
I mean, just, we were planning our life. Two years, two years in South Korea, we were gonna have literally the best life because my entire family, all of us, I mean, we've always wanted to travel. South Korea has always been on our amazing list that we wanted to travel to. The culture, the food, and the fact that, you know, it's just a quick, short plane ride away from the Philippines so my husband could see his family. So, fast forward. Um, but we filled out the EFMP paperwork. Um, the thing you should know about that paperwork is that for, for someone with, well, okay. So if you are a, uh, a dependent who has specific needs, then they would have to make sure that they have um, people within the military hospital uh, section there who can meet your needs. Um, now my needs that were written down by my current, my psychiatrist, were simply for me to be able to continue on my current med, uh, my current meds. Um, she even made it a point to put on the original paperwork that I've been stable for several years and you know I just need current you know just my medications refilled and may like maybe once a year someone could sit down with me and talk which actually I really don't even need that because I mean I only with my um, psychiatrist now we talk maybe once a month and we talk for like five minutes over the phone and it's all the same. How are you doing? Oh, I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. So how are you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling good. I'm on good meds. Everything's going good. You know, I have a good life. Well, that's great. I'll talk to you again, you know, in a month and a half from now. Okay, great. See you then. Talk to you then. Whatever. Um, <laughs> so, of course, all of this information was put into the uh, paperwork that was being sent to... Um, the army base in South Korea and we had no there was no doubt or no reason in my mind or my husband's or any of our minds that I wouldn't be accepted or allowed to be there because even in the the spouse groups that I had joined um, the army spouses on that particular army base, the Americans that came over with their husbands, there are actually quite a few, quite a few of American spouses who came with their husbands who were basically on the same meds that I'm on and um, had formerly seen psychiatry and were diagnosed as being bipolar one disorder there's even one lady there who um now maybe they were lying but she she's schizophrenic supposedly she has her meds and she's stable i am bipolar i take wonderful meds and i'm stable well his orders got deferred and delayed for a while and so they, we honestly got to the point where we felt like, okay, well, this really isn't going to happen. Because originally we were supposed to be there at the beginning of this year. And then we were supposed to be there in June. And then those orders were taken away again, and it was just kind of like up in the air. And um, we found out that his next duty, day, duty station was going to be back at good old Fort Bragg, where we have spent two tours already. Um, anyway, we got the news back from, from Korea and Korea said that they would not accept me because of my mental illness and because they don't have, um, they don't have the special accommodations for my illness that I would need there. And at first I was like, special accommodations? Like, what are they even talking about? Um, 
when my therapist or my psychiatrist, she's a nurse practitioner, I don't know what she is, but um, when she wrote down the stuff for my, for the letter over there, she said that, you know, patient is stable, she just needs continued uh, refills of her meds, and maybe, you know, a yearly or a six month or whatever, a psychiatric, you know, just a, an appointment to talk to someone. Well, apparently in South Korea, there's no one you can talk to. Um, yeah, I guess the, the military hospital there does not have anyone who works psychiatric um, at all. At all. I guess they have no people there who uh, have mental illnesses, perhaps. I'm not sure. Um, so at first we were really sad. We're like, man, this sucks. So I went through the process of, oh, that's really, really dark. We went through the process of appealing. And so I went through the process of appealing and tried to um, do it and so that they know that I don't need any special services, that I am a 39 year old woman, I am completely fine. All I need are the continued refills of my medications. I don't even need to talk to anybody. I don't, I barely even talk to my psychiatrist now. Half the time I miss our teleconference appointments, or she does. She has something else come up and obviously she's not like overly concerned for my well-being that, um, yeah. So, Anyway, long story short, today we found out that, um, or actually today my husband got orders in hand to report to South Korea without myself and our children for two years. His report date that he has to be on post in South Korea is December 16th. So my daughters and I will be moving ourselves to Fort Bragg, North Carolina, um, probably about the last two and a half, like the last two weeks of November. So, now this is the crazy part. Let me take a drink real quick. Mm. That's really sweet. Mm. This is the crazy part that I don't understand. How can I be mentally unstable so much that I cannot be allowed in South Korea on the base. They can't allow me there because they don't have services, which for me just means just refill my stupid medications. That's all. So I'm not stable enough to go to South Korea, but I'm stable enough for them to take my husband away for two years. That's, that's the, oh yeah. That's a real kicker right there. So basically my family, my entire family is being punished because I am mentally ill. On the paperwork that came back from South Korea, from the army base there, it's specified that family members must be absent of mental illness for at least five years before they're allowed to come to that uh, army base. And that's funny to me because mental illness doesn't go away. I had it five years ago. I'm going to have it five years from now. I've had it since I was a teenager. So, yeah, that's where I am right now. I'm, I'm sick to my stomach. My head is just swirling. I have so much to do. I have to figure out how I am going to how I'm gonna move and 
essentially when my husband helps us get to Fort Bragg, he has to turn around and come right back here to Louisiana so that he can um, clear housing. So I'm gonna be moving into our new home with three girls, being mentally ill myself. We'll be waiting for, uh, we'll be waiting for the delivery of all of our home goods. My husband will miss, we'll miss Thanksgiving together, we'll miss Christmas, his birthday is in January. And I, I will be 42 years old when I see my husband again. But that's okay for me to have to stay here because I'm mentally ill. But I can't go to South Korea with him. And I don't know why. What do they think that someone like me is going to do there? Do they not have my medications in South Korea? I mean, I'm, it's a military hospital, a United States military hospital. You can't tell me that they don't have the medications that I need. They're not crazy out of this world medications. They're, they're normal. I just need them because they are what helps my brain work the way it's supposed to. It's like the, the best way I can describe it. Oh gosh, I can barely write. I'm gonna keep writing. I'm gonna try and keep writing and just name them down here. Um, Morisaki Shikibu. Shinryoku. Two, let's see if I can spell this one right. T S U Su Suki. Is that what this one is? Sukushi, darn it. Sukushi, T S U K. Oh, no, I feel like I gotta do it all over again. No, I'll just use some white out stuff. So, yep, so tomorrow will be a day filled with calling housing on Fort Bragg and um, trying to see if they can even give us housing because you have to be on a wait list. I have no idea how long the wait list is right now, but I know that we don't have time to wait. Come on, Becky. Oh, pardon that. We were camping and I was in charge of chopping firewood and um, I ended up getting a blister. Kozumosu. Emerald of Shavor. Robert Oster, Great Southern Ocean. I can't even spell right now. Yeah, so I guess this is my first vlog for vlogtober and um i wish it was a happier one for you guys what is this one what is that one ah oxblood but that's the reality of and that's uh red beans and rice that's the reality of my life right now now we've sort of had issues in the past because of my mental illness, color nostalgia, summer rain, but never like this. Uh, we've lived all over the United States. We lived in Alaska for four years, Colorado, four years, Fort Bragg. This will be our th my well. This will be our third time in Fort Bragg. Fort Bragg. Number 17, Jane Austen. I don't understand how they have, all the other places have no problem with me coming to their post. But in South Korea, I'm not welcome there. 
And I know that mental illness is such a huge taboo in South Korea. I understand and I know that they probably don't have psychiatrists on hand for people who need psychiatric help. And they probably don't even have time for people who just want to talk because I don't know because it's just such a huge taboo there but I don't even I don't even need to talk to anybody I just need my medicine my medicine and my coping techniques which is journaling like crazy these are the thing and being with my husband my husband you guys my husband is the center of my world he is my rock he is my true north. He, he keeps me sane. He knows me better than I know myself. He knows when I'm on the path to becoming manic. He knows how to help me cope. He can see even beforehand, you know, when I'm starting to become really low and I'm going down into a very low depression. He helps me. He's understanding. He's constantly reassuring me and just his presence next to me. We don't even have to be in the same room. Just knowing that he is in the house with me helps me because I know that out of the entire world, my husband is the one who has my back. And he's the only one that has my back. And he won't always take care of me. I know he's, I mean, and I know this is so silly to some of you. He has been through, my husband's been deployed five times for a year each. And, you know, I made it through. I, you know, I did. And my kids made it through. And we did fine. But now... You know, he's, we're at retirement. He's been in for 20 years. And, um, gosh, we just really wanted to go to Korea as a family. There was so much. I mean, we, I even had, like, traveler's notebook spreads made up for all the different places that we wanted to go visit. Things that we wanted to do as a family. I'm sorry. And I know this is like, there, there are people out there that are dying of COVID right now. And there's so many more important things happening. But right now, in my little world, this is um, just another day in um, bipolar paradise. So I, I can't even sit here and say that I'm not going to get low after this. I'm sure I will. But my husband's still home with me for now. And he will help me be the best version of myself that I can possibly be. Because that's what he does. And um, pretty soon he's going to be gone. For two years, not even just a year. His deployments overseas when he was fighting terrorists were a year. And this is a place, this is a, a PCS, a duty station where they welcome families. Because it's so long of a tour there, they encourage families to come. But I can't go. I'm sorry guys, I just, some of you wanted me to be honest, so I'm kind of bearing it right now and being honest. And you just saw me do a swatch of all of my inks. That was my entire ink collection. I didn't talk about the inks because y'all probably already know what all of them are. But at least you had something to see while you got to hear me whine. <laughs> All right, I think that's it for now. Yep. I'll be over this in like a day or two and then I'll make some more videos. 
You guys be well and take care.